Hi guys, this is Don, and I want to go over a variation of a paired samples test that has been giving people some problems, and I want to do it all in StatCrunch. In this problem, we're given raw data. We're giving a table of mileage of a car without the additive and with the additive. So that tells you that it is a paired samples test because we've got each of these cars, eight cars, with and without the treatment. And they want to know at alpha of 0.10, is there enough evidence to conclude that the fuel additive improved gas mileage? First question is to state the claim. And the claim is the fuel added it improved mileage, which is what they said. So if the additive improved mileage, and if mu sub d in this problem is stated as the mileage without the additive minus the mileage with additive, that means mean with the additive would be greater than the mean without, which would give you a difference of less than zero. So we look at our alternatives here. The one that you can draw to is that the alternative, which is the claim, because it is a inequality, the difference is less than zero. That makes the uh, null, the difference is greater than or equal to zero. The first thing we want to do is come up with the critical value of t. And we can get that using StatCrunch. Now, fortunately, in this particular problem in my stat lab, we've got raw data and we've got the little icon there. So I can click on that and I'm going to open that data up in StatCrunch. And initially, I'm just going to leave this be. We want to find the critical value of T. And we do that using the T distribution calculator and we need the degrees of freedom. In a paired sample test, the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of pairs minus one. In this case, we've got eight pairs. Minus one would give us seven. Our alpha is 0.1. And I'm going to click on that and since we're talking about a left hand or left tail test, since the alternative is mu sub d is less than zero, we want a left hand test. That means that our critical value of t is minus 1.15. Okay, so that gives us the t value. And from that, of course, we can set up the rejection zone and it's anything less than minus 1.415, anything to the left. That's where the rejection region is. The next thing they want us to do is to calculate the D bar, which is the difference, the mean difference. And we also need to calculate the standard deviation of the differences. And we can do that in a couple of steps by going ahead and running our hypothesis test. I'm going to click on stat, T stat paired. And in the first column, we're going to select gas mileage with the additive. Second is, I'm sorry, without the additive. The second is with the additive. We are going to not change anything on where and group by. I want to go ahead and save the differences because we're going to use that in a minute to calculate the standard deviation of the differences. And we want to do the hypothesis test. The mean difference is greater than or equal to zero. Remember in StatCrunch, it always just shows equal. And what is important is to get that alternative set up properly. In this case, the alternative is the mean difference is less than zero. And that in StatCrunch, the calculation that is involved, if it is significant for the difference 
equal to zero, it would also be significant for anything greater than zero. So let's click on compute and we get our results up here and the sample difference mu sub or excuse me d bar is minus one four one three and that is the answer that they're looking for in my stat lab the t stat the t statistic that we calculate from these paired differences is minus 5.104 and there again that is the answer they're looking for in my stat lab. We have our p-value here and although we're going to look at whether or not our t-stat falls within the rejection region we know already that it does because our p-value 0 0.0007 is much less than our alpha value of 0.1. So we have a lot of information there. The next thing we want to do though is to calculate the standard deviation of these differences. That's S sub D. And to do that we can just go to data, compute, expression, and I'm just going to, I'm sorry, easier way to do this is just to go to stat, summary stats, column, and we're going to analyze the differences, and all I really want is the standard deviation, and I'm going to hit compute, and it gives me a standard deviation of those differences, S sub D, of 0.783, which is the answer that my stat lab wanted. So really, we've got everything we need to answer the rest of these questions, we know that our p-value is less than alpha, so that tells us to reject the null. And we also can see that our t-test, the standardized test statistic of a negative 5.104 is way to the left of the, the I'm sorry, the critical T of minus 1.415. So that means that this standardized test statistic is in the rejection region, which confirms what we know from the probability. We re reject the null hypothesis. The last part of the question is interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. And this person said at the 10% significance level, there is not enough evidence that the fuel additive improved gas mileage. Well, that's just the opposite. Remember, our claim was that the additive did improve gas mileage, and the claim was the alternative. And in, since we have rejected the null, which is the fact, or the would be the complement of the claim that the fuel additive did not improve gas mileage, we can say that at the alpha of 10%, there is enough evidence that the fuel additive did improve gas mileage. Hope that helps.